Hey everybody, this week I'm going to show you what you need to do to become a drone pilot in the United States. I'm going to take my certification test. When I get back, I'll fill you in on everything you need to know. I passed. It is not easy. And while this is fresh, I'm going to outline five different areas that you really need to understand to take the test. Now, if you've done no studying, no prep, this is what you're getting into. First of all, you need to be able to understand how to read a sectional chart, something like this. Now, it's super complicated. If you have no idea where to begin, you don't even know how to do latitude and longitude and figure out where certain things are. You don't know what an airport is. You don't know what airplane highways look like. You don't know the difference between MSL and AGL, so different altitudes, either above ground level or above sea level. You don't know what restricted areas are, if you can fly in them, or prohibited areas, can you fly in those? Military operation areas, can you fly in those? Do you know what frequency the control towers are on, how to read that, how to find that? All of those things go into reading a sectional chart. It takes some time. That's probably like 25% of the test. Secondly, you need to understand airspace. And that a little bit goes back to the sectional chart. So you have class B airspace in blue. You have class C airspace in magenta. And then in dashed blue, you have D airspace. And in dashed magenta, you have E airspace. You have to understand how high they go, what you can do in those certain areas. You have to understand the shape of those things because they're not basically straight down to the ground all the way up into the air. They're kind of shaped like a cake. And you also have to understand G airspace, which is where we as <laughs> drone pilots can fly. Then there's a lot of questions about METARs. This is a METAR. It looks like a foreign language, but you have to understand when those were issued, what the wind speed and direction is, what the visibility is like, if there's clouds. Now, in addition, the next thing you have to understand is TAFs. TAFs are very similar to METARs, except TAFs are kind of the prediction. It'll kind of say, in the future, this is what the weather should be like. You gotta be able to read that too. And finally, you have to be aware of a lot of the general regulation that goes with part 107. So how fast can you fly? How big of an aircraft can it be? When do you need to report accidents? Stuff like that. A lot of that you can actually guess at because if you've been flying drones for a long time, like I have, you kind of are aware of a lot of those things. And uh, a lot of them are fairly common knowledge, but a lot of them aren't. For instance, this question, how much can a small UAS weigh? 55 pounds, less than 55 pounds, or 55 kilograms. So you knew 55 was in your head, but oddly, less than 55 pounds is the answer. It's kind of a trick question. They have a lot of those. I'll be honest with you, I didn't study as long as I probably should have. Luckily, I did pass. But I was using all of my brain cells from about 6 p.m. last night when I started till noon today when I took the test, trying to get all of this information in my brain. I actually did take a course because I had such limited time. I needed all the information just lined up for me, ready to go. I'll put a link to that down in the description. The test was $150. It's not cheap. I didn't want to not pass it. The course was about 100 bucks. Yeah, all of this makes it kind of an expensive operation. So if you want to take the next steps and get your license so you can start making money from it, I've outlined in the description below basically how to sign up for this test, how I studied for it, some of the main things to do for the test. I can't do all of those here. And then when the next step is after you get this and also how to register your drone if you haven't done that already. All right, thanks for watching everybody. If there's anything I missed, say you're a drone pilot, leave it in the comment section below. If you guys are learning and you're curious on how it's all working, comments below as well. The community can help us answer those questions. I'm in a very similar situation as all of you. I'm just trying to fill you in on what I went through. And again, all this relates to current drone operations in the United States. Jonas, for instance, just told me this week that Sweden, first country in the world to ban all drone operation, which is ridiculous. I'm sure that's going to change soon, but that's the current state of things. We'll see you next Tuesday.